Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna do a quick video on how to replace the brake rotors on your Polaris Razor. And this applies to pretty much every side-by-side, -side, whether it be a Razor, a Can-Am, a Kawasaki, a Honda, they're all gonna be similar. They all use the same design. The rotors usually get held on by the studs. They're spline and they have a mechanical connection in there when you hammer them in or press them in, whatever you wanna do and they get held in here, which in turn sandwiches the rotors. Unlike on a car, most people, I find, tend to really ignore the fact that you need to replace and service the rotors on an ATV or a side-by-side. -side. Now, you don't have to do it nearly as often as you would on your pickup truck, your tow rig, you know, your commuter car or whatever, um, because I mean, it's just a completely different system. You don't usually generate the same brake temperatures. They're much smaller. You don't cover the same amount of distance as you would commuting to and from work if you gotta drive an hour each way every day for years. Um, so with that being said, I do find this is an overlooked area of side-by-side -side maintenance along with some other stuff like suspension components like rebuilding shocks and stuff like that so um, i wanted to go over this because it is a little bit different than the brakes on your car and if you're used to doing the brakes on your car you know you just usually take the brake caliper off and then you pop the rotor off you slap a new rotor on sometimes you have to take the carrier off but it's very very simple um, on most vehicles until you get into heavier equipment and heavier trucks and stuff like that on this, it's a little bit different. So I'm gonna walk you through. You don't need any special tools. All you're gonna need is a vise and a nice big hammer. And um, the rest you should be able to improvise in pretty much any shop. And I mean, you can get away without using a vise. You could use two big blocks of wood. I'm just gonna use the vise because it's here and it's handy and it's a good tool for the job. There's multiple ways to go about doing this. I'm just gonna show you the easy way that works for me and it'll likely work for you as well. So stay tuned. This will be a quick one, super easy, super straightforward. So let's show you how that's done. I'm gonna jump right into the replacement part of this video. And then if you want more info, um, some reasons why you would need to replace your rotors, how to know whether you need to replace them, stay tuned or skim to the end of the video and then I'll go into more detail about that. But just for you guys that wanna see how it's done, we're gonna jump right into it. I'm not gonna go through all this. Basically, you're just gonna disassemble the whole front spindle assembly here in the hub. Now, you don't actually need to remove this if you're just doing the brake rotors. I did this because I'm doing some other service as well. I'm gonna change out those bearings. Now, this is a good time to at least check and replace your wheel bearings if you need to, or if you're going to be doing your brakes and you're planning on doing like a wheel bearing service, I would suggest bundling it all up, or if you're doing something else in the front end. I'll just show you one here. Front and rears are basically the same. Shapes might vary a little bit, but what I like to do is, just wrap anything in here that you don't want to get scratched up and dinged up where the bearing surface rides. And then you're going to open up your vise or use your two blocks of wood or whatever else you got, two pieces of, of metal, um, I don't know, whatever you figure out. And just make sure that you got a nice contact patch on the back so that when you hammer it, all the force goes into the stud and it's just not going to put any pressure in a weird spot that can cause a crack or something like that. I like to put a wheel nut on here, a lug nut, and then basically you're just going to hammer this stud out the other side and it doesn't take much force. There we go, it's popped out. The splines just hold it in there and a couple of good whacks get it out. Pop that out, there you go. That studs out. Now, yes, you technically could probably reuse these. I'd clean them up on a wire wheel real, real nice if I was, and then you could get away with reusing them. So now we'll do the exact same thing for the other three here. Now, you don't really need to put this lug nut on here if you're re redoing your studs. I figured, you know what? I got seven years out of these original studs. I might as well replace them. I've had wheels off and on this machine hundreds of times. I'm sure those threads aren't as happy as they used to be. And um, for the price, I got these from Polaris. You could basically locate any M12 by 1.5 stud and it would work. I paid the premium, went to the dealership and got them. These assemblies here, as long as you don't see any excessive wear on these surfaces or waviness or pitting, you're fine. You can reuse these, they've got a long life cycle. Let's get this out.
And then once this last one's out, this will separate. You can probably see it moving already. I'm gonna save those studs because they could come in handy. I'll throw them in the gearbox in the trailer in case you break a stud or someone else does. That lifts right off there, perfect. As you can see, there's years of crud in there. There's not that much depth taken off of these. I bet if, if you've got a machine shop or, or, or lathe or something like that, or you're a machinist or have a friend who is, I bet you could remachine these and reuse them. I'm not throwing these out, I'm gonna keep them. But since I don't have access to that easily right now, we're just gonna replace them. I also think that it's a good idea to clean these components right now since you're already in here. It's, you're not gonna have this thing apart again for a long, long time. So I'm just gonna go throw this in the parts washer and spend two minutes cleaning out all the splines really nice, getting all that old built up grease and dirt out of there and just get them looking a little more fresh. As you can see here, I put about two minutes of elbow grease in the parts washer on this thing and it came out pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it just makes reassembly and everything much easier. And then you can get a, you can do a good job inspecting these components. Just make sure there's no damage, no cracks, nothing like that that could cause issues. So now we see our old left front rotor here. We'll get rid of that. And then we'll replace it with this new one. It literally just lays on there. You have your step sections here where the new stud will sit just like that. The stud falls through on the rotor. It holds in here. So they should pretty much self-center themselves in there, just like that. Now some people will use a press. You can use like a ball joint press for these, or you can smack them in. Now, I would argue that the ball joint press is probably a better method of securing these. Less likelihood of causing any damage. So when I say ball joint press, I mean just like your basic big C-clamp style press here. You could use a hydraulic press as well, but this is more than enough. And then, I mean, you could have different fittings for yours if you have a kit. It's really easy to get these ones here because you're basically just gonna let the bottom of the stud go through the hole in the press, put something underneath the other side to kind of, whoops, level it out. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then you can just go about it like that. So let's do one like this. Just try and center it the best you can. Once again, doesn't have to be completely perfect. It'll pull itself in there. And the best way to hit it is with a impact gun. Now just press it in till it seats. It'll bottom out. Now before I torque that one all the way down, I like to do a second one across from it just to kind of pull them into place nicely. But like I said, just try your best to get it centered on there and we'll press it in. Get it in there nice, make sure it's seated real good. You're just gonna go around and do that to the other two. That's it, piece of cake. So all four of those are in nicely. They're seated. Four new studs in there, check that out. Awesome. Now we got a new brake rotor, new studs on our old hub assembly. Your brake should work like new now. So the last step obviously would be to use some brake cleaner or some alcohol or something to clean this whole new brake rotor assembly because they do put some sort of a, a grease on it or from machining there's debris on it and you don't wanna burn that into your new pads. Okay, that was super easy. Um, shouldn't take you too long at all. Like I said, no special tools needed. You can do this on your driveway with a jack and a few blocks of wood and a hammer if you needed to, uh, and then whatever you need to take that thing apart. There's loads of videos online, both on my channel and other channels that'll show you how to get to this point. But um, I just wanna go over one more thing. Make sure your braking system is functioning on every level. There's a few different things you need to look at. The calipers. Make sure all the rubber seals on the calipers are good and sealing. Make sure your, your, your brake sliders are good. Make sure there's no visible damage there. If you're getting contamination through the seals into your caliper, it's going to, it's going to impact how those sliders slide. Make sure the sliders and the, the brake components are lubed up properly and serviced regularly, at least 
every oil change, you should be pulling those calipers apart, cleaning them and lubing them up real good. If you've never changed your brake fluid, then get yourself a bottle of brake fluid. Um, just any, anything will do really, any dot four fluid, even this Prestone stuff. Uh, at the end of the day, the most important part about fluids is keeping them changed, keeping them fresh, not necessarily always running the best fluid. I run a variety of different fluids in my different applications. I like the Amsoil stuff, but I also run more generic grade stuff. You don't need to run the most expensive brake fluid in this machine. You just need to change it or flush it, I mean, every season. So flush your brake fluid. Master cylinder is easy to get to. It's right up here and it doesn't take much fluid. You get a one liter bottle and you'll have leftover. Flush it through properly. Tons of videos online on how to do that. Super, super easy. And that is another thing that's really overlooked and it has a huge impact on how your pedal feels and how well your brakes function. Brake fluid likes to absorb moisture. The more moisture absorbs, the lower its boil point becomes, the worse it works. Too much moisture in your braking system on the inside leads to contamination and corrosion and overall deterioration. So for the cost of a $10 bottle of brake fluid, you can make your brakes feel like new again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna inspect the calipers. You're gonna put a new set of brake pads on there. You're going to flush your brake fluid. You're gonna make sure all the seals are good. And then you're gonna properly bed your pads into your new rotors to maximum brake, maximize braking performance and life cycle. New pads, 100% new pads. Don't go reusing your 50% pads on a brand new rotor. You want a nice new set of pads. It's gonna seat in there really nice. You're gonna wanna go out once all these are done. You're gonna wanna test your brakes nicely. You're gonna wanna bed your pads into the new rotors. It's really important to bed your brake pads and heat cycle them to start. If you've ever been into the automotive world, racing, stuff like that, you'll know when you get a performance set of pads, they actually have a bedding compound smeared on them sometimes. And it's really important. And the way you usually bed a set of pads is somewhere along the lines of you do three kind of 15 mile an hour, 15 to 20 mile an hour stops. Uh, you do hard brakes, even application, not lock up the wheels, and you generate some heat into those. You do that zero to 20, brake, generate some heat, do that three times, speed it up to like 30, 35 miles an hour, do that three times, speed it up to like 40, 50 miles an hour, do that three times with some heavier braking, and then you park the vehicle and you let the brake components cool off completely. And for most applications, you can consider those brake pads are now bedded into those new rotors and you're gonna get maximum pad life, maximum rotor life, and the best braking you can have. If you have not ever swapped or flushed the brake fluid in your machine, do it now. Why would you need to change the brake rotors on your side-by-side -side or ATV? Let's answer that question. A lot of people run into tons of issues on these razors specifically with weird brake pad wear issues. So that's usually caused by a few things. If your sliders on your brake calipers are working well, everything's lubed up, nothing's worn out, all the seals are good, and your brakes are not kind of dragging and the caliper is set up and everything's working like it's supposed to, the pedal pressure is good, you've got good fluid and all that, and you're still having issues with weird brake pad wear, generally what you're left with is the rotors. And the reason these get ignored is because they're overpriced for what they are. This rotor is so basic, it's literally just a flat piece of metal that's being machined and it costs significantly more than even a good rotor for your road car. Um, but I mean, if you're working on these machines, you've just accepted that we pay this luxury tax. Now, if you look at these old rotors, and I'll show you some pictures, um, some shots in the video here, you can see there's waviness in them. You can see that there's wear. You can see there's a good lip. You can see that these things have basically, they've gotten their life cycle out of them. And when you compare them to the new ones, there's a big difference. These new ones are perfectly true. They're nice and flat. They're gonna give better brake performance and way better brake pad life. Let's go over the parts really quickly. Um, basically what you'll need is you'll need some new rotors. I went with the OEM rotors. I got seven years out of my old rotors, around 11 or 12,000 kilometers, around 9,000 miles, uh, give or take. And um, yes, the rotors from Polaris are a bit overpriced, but you know what? I just went with the OEM components because I got a good service life out of the old ones and I don't know if I'll ever get another seven years out of the battle wagon. We'll see. If you've done everything else on your brakes and you're still having weird wear issues, then 
you should probably consider replacing your rotors. And then you're gonna have brakes that feel like new, brand new off the lot um, for really not much work at all. You can do this in an afternoon on your own on the driveway. So don't let, don't let some of these jobs freak you out. Anyone can do this stuff. These machines are very, very easy to service. And if you do a lot of this work on your own, you'll really reduce the cost of ownership and you'll also have a much better time on the trails because if you ride hard, you really do have to maintain hard. So make sure you maintain your machines similar to the way you ride them. If you don't ride hard and you're just a Sunday cruiser and you just like to hit the easy trails, you don't need much maintenance. If you're a guy that's out there pushing the limits every weekend, well, you have to maintain to that standard as well. So keep that in mind. Your machine will be as reliable as you make it, just like this sport is as safe or as dangerous as you wanna make it. So a big factor in the reliability and a lot of the complaints we hear are caused by the people that are maintaining the vehicles. If you're not properly maintaining your machine, it will not be reliable. Enough talk though. Um, most important thing is get out there, ride, and have a good time. So if you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of our other how-to DIY videos. We got a bunch of on there like diff rebuilds, diff conversions. I'm gonna do a video coming up now on how to rebuild a axle, a CV axle, which is another thing I find a lot of people, you know, ignore. You can fix a, a broken axle for 50 bucks usually instead of throwing it out and buying a whole new axle uh, or if you replace your axles because you broke one it's cool to go spend 50 bucks and fix that axle so you have a good spare for next time and spend it instead of spending 200 plus dollars on a on a full assembly so all the like for example if you're running a super atv rhino they sell the boot kits they sell the replacement joints and all that you can rebuild these axles over and over and over again and get a ton of life out of them at a way cheaper price point than if you're just constantly throwing new parts at something. A lot of these parts are not necessarily disposable. They are serviceable, but I find a lot of shops and a lot of people don't do that. If you're working on your machine alone and wrenching on your own, your time isn't as valuable as paying someone hundred bucks an hour at a good shop to do it. So that's where it really pays off to watch a video and fix a component on your own for $50 in an hour or two of time, rather than throwing a new component in it. Because sometimes when you do go to a shop, sometimes it's just not worth the labor rate. They will just say, let's put a new part in it. It'll end up costing you the same. And, and I, I don't disagree with that. There are times when that makes complete sense. So uh, they're not lying to you. It's just balancing out pros and cons, right? But in this case, um, brakes, stuff like that, super easy. Axles, super easy. Oil changes, super easy. There's no reason you need to be paying a shop to do that stuff if you feel you can, you want to take it on yourself and save yourself a bit of money. And all that money you save can be a new set of tires. It can be a new set of wheels. It can be some gas for the truck for an extra trip this month. Um, so just think of it that way. You can reduce the cost of ownership of these machines, especially if you're buying used or you're, you, you ride an older machine. You don't need to be dealer servicing it for everything. Um, using the internet, using your head, you can really solve a lot of this stuff on your own, even with just a very basic mechanical knowledge. So, like I said, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, check out the other videos, follow us on Instagram and on Facebook, and ride safe out there, guys. We'll see you in the next video.